everyone, it's Sevi. If you need advice about love and life, then there's no one better to turn to than our beloved Miss Hina! Miss Hina! As it happens, she also has someone who looks frighteningly similar to her. Goro, and he's a must-have support for Ito Noel and Albedo mains. In the same way that Miss Hina guides her loyal readers in navigating life's difficulties, I'm here to guide you on how to use and build Goro. We'll be looking at this good boy's kit, constellations, stat and artifact builds, weapons, and team comps to make him the best Geo General he can be. Let's begin! First is his kit, but if you already know it, feel free to skip to the next section. Goro's role is very straightforward and hyper-focused. He's meant to support Geo characters with defense scaling Geo characters being the main targets. His skill generates a field that gives the general's war banner buffs to the active characters in it. The more Geo teammates you have, the more buffs are given. One Geo teammate gives defense, which you get by default with Goro. Two Geos gives interruption resistance. Three Geos gives more Geo damage. This makes having at least three Geos on the team very appealing. Goro's defense buff gives a flat value based on the skill's talent levels, unlike Bennett and Sara whose buffs are a percent of their base attack. So no matter how much defense you stack on him, it won't affect the team buff he gives. The Geo damage buff, on the other hand, doesn't increase with the level. It stays at a constant 15% Geo damage bonus, which is like having a two-piece archaic Petra. Then his burst casts his skill field again but lets the field follow you around through a cute little companion. It does geo damage over time that scales on Goro's defense and pulls in crystallized shards in your surrounding area for convenient added protection. The biggest thing to note is that his burst's defense buff, called General's Glory, also scales based on his skill's talent level, not his burst's level. So it's more important to level up his skill first. In fact, if you're not prioritizing damage, it's the only talent you need to level. Leveling up his burst will just add to the damage it deals. Goro's first passive talent lets his burst give an additional defense percent buff to your party members when you cast it. And the second passive talent adds defense scaling to the burst and skill damage. At C0, his buffs will have very good uptime if you can juggle them correctly, since his skills duration and cooldown are exactly the same. His burst also has a 9 second duration but 20 second cooldown, so while you're waiting for it to cool down, use his skill to fill in the waiting time. Goro's pretty simple and convenient to use, just don't rely on him for big damage since he's mainly a support that just happens to deal a little bit of damage on the side. So let's see what his constellations add. His first and second constellations are basically quality of life additions that affect his skill and burst uptime. You can practically eliminate the downtimes of his buff as long as you can fulfill their conditions. These aren't essential, but they're decent quality of life upgrades. C3 is also a nice constellation because it buffs the skill first, so it instantly adds a higher defense buff. Now C4 is a very interesting constellation. It allows Goro's burst to heal based on 50% of his defense every 1.5 seconds as long as you have two Geo characters in the team including Goro. But take note that it can only heal the active character, not the entire team, which kind of holds it back for me. The main questions are, how good is it for healing and can it be enough to make Goro the only healer in a mono Geo team? Well, let's say an average max leveled Goro would get around 1800 to 2000 raw defense. Add in the 4-piece husk buff and Goro's own buffs and that could reach up to 2300 to 2500. So you could get something like 1k plus heals per tick. For example, mine heals at 1.3k per tick. It ticks every 1.5 seconds and his burst can last from 9 to 12 seconds thanks to his C2, so those are 6 to 8 ticks. My Goro can heal 8 to 10k HP on a single burst round, but again, only the active character. Obviously, it's far from how much actual healer units can heal, but it's something. Is this good enough to make him your only healer in Abyss? In my practical testing, I can actually make it work provided I satisfy these conditions. 1. He has a high enough ER and good team batteries to reliably use his burst when needed. Don't stack too much defense on him if that means sacrificing energy recharge. 2. You have a very, very good shielder like Zhongli or a well-invested Toma and you can effectively dodge attacks as much as you can. Additionally, it's better if you can generate crystallized shields for more protection, so a fourth elemental unit helps. 
The idea is to receive the least amount of damage so there's little to heal in the first place, but that requires highly invested shielders and mad dodging skills. 3. Ideally, you aren't fighting Rift Hounds. For me, I still struggled a bit with relying only on Goro as a healer in Spiral Abyss because of the corrosion from Rift Hounds. Otherwise, with good shielding, you will mostly be alright, and in the open world, he'll be more than enough most times. Overall, it's a nice constellation to add a healer function to Goro that can suffice in the right conditions, but doesn't make him a true healer of course. It's really the Rift Hounds and Spiral bosses that make it a struggle for his healing to keep up. There, using dedicated healers is way more comfortable. In fact, even Ningguang with a Prototype Amber works better as a healer, especially because Prototype Amber is full party healing and it's easier to spam her low cost burst. So those are my thoughts on Goro's C4 and added healing utility. Moving forward, C5 just increases his burst talent levels which translates only to a damage increase. And finally, C6 is somewhat the Geo equivalent of Kujo Sara's C6. When you use his skill or burst, you're now adding a crit damage increase to Geo damage for 12 seconds depending on how many Geo characters you have, which is a perfect duration for Ito. What else can I say? It makes Goro the ultimate Geo support, but do note that it won't show up in the stats page since it only buffs Geo damage and not the inherent crit damage of the character. Now for his stats. You'll want to prioritize getting energy recharge and defense on Goro to play to his strengths as a support and to have his burst up as often as possible. For his circlet, if you're using a Favonius Warbow, which you generally want to, a crit rate circlet will be a good option. Aside from that, a defense circlet with really good substats can also be a good option and it's better if you want to maximize his C4. For the goblet, it can be geo damage bonus or defense goblet. Again, if you have C4 and want better healing, definitely go for defense. As for his damage, I tried both goblets for Goro and the difference is negligible. And for the sands, it's a choice between defense and ER, depending if you still need to compensate for defense. I think over 200% energy recharge is a good target to aim for. He needs a lot since his skill only generates 2-3 geo particles and his burst costs a whole 80 energy. For the substats, like I said, defense and energy recharge are your priority. Getting some crit rate is also good if you're using Favonius Warbo and more important if you're not using a crit rate circlet. You can get away with having 30%-ish crit rate. Some EM stats are a bit copium but at least this means having better crystallized shields from Goro so it should be your lowest priority and only accidental. Before getting into artifact sets, I honestly think Goro is a stats over set kind of character. His utility is built into his kit and as long as he has a high amount of energy recharge and some amount of defense, he doesn't necessarily need any fancy sets. That being said, the sets I will recommend focus on getting those defense and ER stats. For the artifacts, early AR players should aim for a 4-piece exile which furthermore adds to his team energy generation thanks to the 4-piece effect. This is something that no 5-star artifact sets have an equivalent to, so you can still run this even when you're at higher AR levels, especially since it helps you save resin. It really helps with energy-hungry units like Ito and Noel. Aside from that, a combination of 2-piece Exile, 2-piece Scholar, and 2-piece Defender's Will are convenient substitutes. For higher AR players who want a full 5-star set, a combo of 2-piece Emblem and 2-piece Husk is easier to farm and contributes to an overall balanced build. Another viable set is 4-piece Husk which is also convenient if you manage to farm a decent set in the process while farming for other Geo characters in the domain. However, you first have to ensure that Goro has sufficient energy recharge whether from the artifact's main or sub stats. The main thing you're getting from 4-piece Husk is the higher defense stat which means a small damage bump but also it will yield a slightly higher healing rate at C4. As for the 4-piece Noblesse set, I have some reservations about it since its buff is attack percent based and the characters that Goro is meant to support won't have high base attack in the first place. Still, if you want to get the highest damage numbers for your Geo DPSs, even if they mainly scale on defense, then the 4-piece Noblesse set is the way to go to add an extra bit of attack stats. If you want more Goro damage for him alone, which I don't recommend you build towards, a 4-piece emblem set can deal slightly more damage than a 4-piece husk set when I tried it since I built him with over 210% energy recharge. And PS, if you're crazy enough to do an incredibly unconventional meme build, you can try him on a Maiden's Beloved set at C4. 
Now for the weapons. Since we're not doing a meme build DPS Goro, even if that sounds wildly fascinating, we want to put support bows on him. The top contender is a weapon we get for free, thankfully, which is the Favonius Warbow. It contributes a lot into fixing his energy recharge needs and it can generate universal particles for your entire team. Just keep in mind that you need a decent crit rate of about 30% or higher for this to reliably proc. You can also hit weak points of enemies to guarantee a crit hit if that's not too slow for you. The Sacrificial Bow is a somewhat inferior version of the Favonius Warbow on him. The energy recharge it gives is much, much lower, and its effect isn't really necessary for Goro since his skill doesn't generate that many particles anyway, and it can have 100% uptime since both its cooldown and duration are 10 seconds. You can also go for an Elegy for the end, however, its passive effect isn't of much use to Geo Team since it only adds elemental mastery and attack percent, but it's slightly more damage and the ER also helps fix Goro's ER needs. But basically, if you can equip him with a Favonius Warbow instead, then do it and that's all he needs. What about his team comps? This one is pretty obvious since Goro is a very very niche character. Team him with Geo teammates. That's it. Ito, Noel, and Albedo are the top options as defense scaling Geo characters. Other Geos like Zhongli, Ningguang, or Geo Traveler don't benefit as much from his defense buffs, but they can still get Geo damage buffs from him and your shields last longer since defense reduces the damage that shields take, which means better protection. You also don't have to strictly fulfill the three Geo members condition of his buffs. Goro can just be paired with Ito or Noel, and that leaves two flex slots you can fill up with other supports or sub DPS members to depending on what you want or need. Does he have use outside of supporting a Geo DPS? Pairing him with a C6 in Yan is stretching it already. I guess you can have another Geo support like Albedo and Zhongli or a healer Ningguang to give your other elemental DPS's Geo resonance, increased defense, protection, and resistance to interruption. You get team survivability in exchange for team damage though, which won't be that good for time-based battles, but it's an option. So that's my full guide to Goro. Thankfully, he's a relatively simple character to use and an easy character to build, who really doesn't need all that much investment to work properly. But more than anything, he's a good boy who deserves lots of head pats and top class fur conditioner. If you pulled for or are pulling for him, let me know in the comments how you like to play him. Don't forget to leave a like if this video helped you out, consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I will see you soon. Take care! Miss Hina! Miss Hina!